Thank you for being here. My name is Matt Jacobs. I'm an entertainment journalist, and I am delighted to spend a few minutes with the creator, writer, director, star, and producer of Fantasmus, Julio Torres. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Julio. How are you? I'm good. I was there, and now I'm here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Time travel is mm -hmm. real. Um, we were both up in the balcony sitting through these two episodes. Yeah. This is the first time you've seen them with an audience? E yeah, yeah. It's funny because making... Well, especially when you make TV, you don't... You never think of an audience full of people seeing it because yeah. famously... That's the not how. That's is... not how the. It's like, you know, on someone's laptop, you're lucky if. Right. If you're the tab that they happen to have open. Right, right, right. But to have a captive audience is, what a what a what a privilege. Thank you for, um, enduring it. Thank you. Yeah, it is a rarity for a TV creator to get to experience what they have created with actual people who are not already in your life. Yeah, and yet you'd think I'd be used to it because now I'm like, oh, wait, I like wrote at Saturday Night Live, who famously has oh, an that's, audience. Well, that, yeah, that would be an exception. Famously has an audience. Um, but uh, yes. uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I was comparing it to... to uh, making a movie where you assumed that there was going to be a theater full of people. This, I thought, laptop open, sun blaring, barely visible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and funny enough, Problemista, your directorial debut premiered in this room. It did premiere in this room, yes, One you're right. Year, yeah. a little over a year ago yeah. at South by yeah. Southwest. I, I gather that some of you were here that night. I was yeah. also. So this is a big year for you. Problemista came out in March. Yes. After March 1st. some delays and then yeah. uh, now Fantasmus. Does it feel like a big year for you? No. No. This is every year for you now. No, 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 no. Uh no, because the 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 joy is making it. Is uh writing it, is being on set with people, is collaborating and this is just like oh right people have to see it now <laughs> well I heard or you have said that this all kind of started with an earring that you once lost specifically at a New Year's Eve dance party yeah so when that incident mm -hmm. happened to you how does that then snowball into Phantasmus? Well, I, yeah, I, uh, in 2019, at the end of it, I was like, it was, yeah, Los Spookies had come out, uh, and another a special, My Favorite Shapes had come out, and, and it felt like, and it really, it really felt like um, no, but but you have opened a door that uh, into it being a Socratic seminar style. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no, it did it did not feel cathartic. No, it felt uh, I I don't know. I am not good with releasing work. I don't. I don't. I wish. <laughs> I was telling my partner the other day. I for the rest of my life. I wish I could make movies and never show them to anyone. Um, because it's like, you know, I'm a bit of a control freak and, and like now it's like things are out of your control. But uh, 
anyway, anyway, uh, and then some like personal life things. And so I, I like at the end of it, I was like, you know, like you should think of this year as a good year. Objectively, good things have happened this year. And and some of it felt very difficult and, and some of it felt, felt painful, but I, I you should you should and then what do I what do people do? What do people do? And I'm like that's something that's in my head a lot. It's like what do people do? What do people do? And I was like, oh, people buy themselves things. And so I was like, oh yes, I can buy myself something. So I bought myself a a, a diamond encrusted oyster shaped <laughs> earring with a little pearl on it what else and i bought it for myself and i was so like like seduced by it i was just so happy with it uh and then i was like i'm gonna wear it for the first time to ring in the new year i put it on 10 minutes later it's gone lost it immediately uh and then i spent the rest of my new year's eve with my flashlight trying to find it on the dance floor. Um, and that's how I, that was an omen for 2020. Yeah, right. <laughs> when things got really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I got in the car to go back home and I just thought, like, fuck, I'll, I'll just make a fucking TV show out of this. <laughs> so I did. The only natural response to such yeah. a thing. The other part of Phantasmus that extends, or one of the other parts that extends beyond the sort of inciting incident of the lost earring is the Which is like to see this through the rubric of having an inciting incident and like a structure. It's like, it's like, <laughs> like, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are these, these vignettes, these digressions that really do hark back to kind of this SNL style writing that you used to do so yeah. how does one marry itself to the other do had some of these sketches been things that existed for you oh, yeah, prior yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. that you sort of wormed into the show oh no for sure like like the 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 earring thing became like because i i i i think that like a lot of comedians fantasize with having a sketch show uh because it's a very rare it's a very rare thing to get to do um uh for reasons i don't understand they're like famously like very difficult to to like sell and make and uh uh and i missed i really missed short form writing um and i kept thinking of like ideas that weren't movies they weren't episodic tv they were just like contained stories and moments and flights of fancy and I didn't really know where to put them. Uh, so then the, the oyster thing became sort of like the, the, the string onto which to hang these, these things that I wanted to show. Like mouth. Like mouth, yeah. Which also allows, I mean, this audience was very excited when Steve Buscemi showed up. Yes! <laughs> These sketches, in particular, the vignettes, whatever we want to call them, the digressions, allow you... Oh, I like you digressions. Digressions, yeah. Yeah, I they, write digressions. <laughs> yes. They allow you to pepper this show mm -hmm. with a parade of exciting guest stars. In these first couple episodes, we've seen Paul Dano and Suni Damani and... Z-Way and Steve Buscemi. I've seen the rest of the series, and let me tell you, it does not let up. It is You're in, in store for some exciting names. Um, what is it like to put together the roster of friends and, and collaborators who you are going to invite into this world with you? Well, to me, having a, a Paul Dano as a Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Like famous people, fame objectively. No, no. Steve Erica. Buscemi, famous. Yeah. Uh, no, like like famous like famous people is to me personally as exciting as having friends on the show who are not there yet and haven't had a chance yet, and it was going to happen regardless of me to show their 
like the, the beauty of their work. So to me, it's like as big as big enough names that I that I I'm humbled enough that like agreed to be in this. Uh, like having like my friend Martine who plays Vanessa in the show. Incredible. Uh, just really like steal the show and be incredible is was is like as fulfilling. Um, so to me, Martine is a guest star. Uh, in as much as like Steve Buscemi or Paul Dano or like Alexa Demi or whomever, um, like they're all like like I'm attracted to like interesting collaborative people, and sometimes they're Tilda Swinton. Sometimes it's like my roommate. Yeah. Have you ever met a Vanessa with a J? No, that's something. I've never met a Vanessa with a J. That's something that Martine came up with. I was like, we should, I was, because at first I named the character Martine, which is her name. Uh, And then like, I felt like she was a little constricted by that. And I was like, but, and then like, she kept referencing, like part of the mood board was Vanessa, the character that Ursula turns into. Uh, We all know, yes, in the pantheon of of lethal brunettes. so she was like, oh, she's like Vanessa. She's like Vanessa. And I was like, let's call her Vanessa. And then she goes, mm, but with a J. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, great, Vanessa with a J. Well, it's interesting, too, because Problemista was, in many ways, a sort of whimsical t- take on the immigration system. Phantasmus is also wrapped up in really a handful of systems. It is, in a way, a show that becomes more and more about the healthcare system, the employment system. Later, there's a lot of stuff about the Hollywood system. Here, we get stuff about the influencer system. And there's this sort of recurring kind of current in the show about the fact that our entire lives and the entire lives of everyone in this world are just like monopolized by corporations. Do ideas like that, is that stuff that you start out with or how does that end up getting woven into these projects? No, I feel like different artists have different hangups. And like, I think that like, and the hangup is different for everyone. And like, I think that like, the most, uh, like, if you're a pop star, chances are that your hangup is romantic, right? It's like it's like either like seduction or rejection, or it's like, it's, yeah, but my hangup is bureaucratic. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's like, like if I made music, it would be about not wanting to fill out the form. And it's, like, not a sexy sell <laughs> to be, like, uh, which is something, to, to be quite honest, something that, that, like, I thought about in the release of Problemista. I was, like, come watch this bureaucratic nightmare. Uh, but people, I don't know, I think people can actually relate to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that you sneak ideas into your work, whereas someone else might uh, bang it on the head a little bit more. And you know what? And like people can relate to it. And those who and and something I've noticed is that those who like thrive in them resent it. Like thrive in bureaucracies, you mean? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. There's this one girl I know that like every time I would like shit on like the idea of earning miles she'd be like, well, what's wrong with earning miles? <laughs> like, I just went to Hawaii for free. Yeah, right. And it's like, all right, put it in your little spreadsheet. <laughs> I don't envy you. I'll pay full price <laughs> just to not make an account with Delta. Yes, yes. Problemista also used what, to my eye, were mostly practical locations, whereas Phantasmus seems to be sort of winkingly artificial. The sets have a certain 
um, un surreality to them, if you will. Uh, where did the sort of visual language, the production design um, philosophy for, for this show come from? I think it, it, it I, I love sets. I love sets. I love getting to like make things from the ground up. Uh, and uh, it was in very early, very early conversations about this in like 2020 that if I, if I have it right, my friend uh, Dave, who's somewhere here, uh, um, it was like, because we were talking about like, what can be shot during this pandemic? What can be shot during COVID? Uh, and then this idea of like having a contained environment where like all this, it's all sets came about. Now, I think practically that was not true. That it was <laughs> cheaper or better or easier in any like production sort of way. Uh, it's a lot of work to build those it's sets. It's a lot of work to build them sets, and it's a big crew to make them happen. Uh, and actually, there's no windows, so it's worse. Um, but, I mean, we ended up shooting this, like, last year? Yeah, last year. But um, that sort of planted the seed, and then, and then it's like, I, I like... And also, weirdly, one of my favorite movies growing up was Dogville. Oh, incredible. And yeah. all it's all constructed set. It's one on set. It's one, it's set. one big one set. Big yeah. room. Yeah. Uh and then I and then I also over the pandemic saw this movie Mishima, which has gorgeous sets. Uh and I don't know. It was just like the idea of presenting New York as because to me it feels there's a clutter to it that feels very real. Like the urgent care, for example, like feels emotionally real, even though it's quite practically not real, uh, that, felt, uh, that, that felt really exciting. Yeah. We're going to let a couple of the common folk ask some questions in a few minutes. Oh, my God. But... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But um, I won't spoil what it is, but there is a, a Cretia Easter egg. Uh, if you're a oh my, my God, favorite if you're shapes, a Dicord fan, yeah. Yes, if you're a my is. favorite shapes admirer, look closely. You might see Cretia in a later episode. Are there other allusions to the Julio Torres multiverse? Uh my. It's so dumb to talk about this because literally, like a few hundred people would know. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, no. There's, there's. If 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 you know me and you know my world, there's there, there's there's a uh, beings that that make cameos. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Do people have questions for? Yeah, Julio. I think everything was perfectly right. clear. I don't know why there's okay questions. Hi, Julio. Hi. Big fan. Love all of your work. Um, thank you. Think you're a super creative and avant-garde storyteller in all the projects that you do. My question for you is. Do you, was there any sort of fear or concern that your stories wouldn't necessarily translate on paper, like through your um, scripts or through storyboarding or anything like that? Uh, you mean that they wouldn't translate to, to like a... Like uh, for Fantasmas, for example, like this is such a great show, but yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. on paper, like how do you, how do you portray all of this? Uh, I, you know... It's, it's, I think it's like, like, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if, uh, you know, if the, I have pulled off anything or if, I actually don't know if like people have been sitting here with like a big question mark <laughs> on their head, just counting the seconds to leave and never think about this again. <laughs> and I think that maybe, that maybe is the experience of some people here and that's okay. But I think that for others, it like resonates and they're curious and they want to see more and then like it awakens something in them. Uh, and I don't know. I, I always trust that there will be those people. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move over to this side right here. 
Um, maybe, oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Maybe just explaining the process of capturing weird or an obscure thought. Because to me, like, six times seven equaling 42 is so strange. But, like, being able to it take is. that and then... They should double check. Put, yeah. <laughs> I agree. And putting that all together with lights and set and doing all of that to make it a full thought on screen that equals 42 is something I'd like to hear about. I love this question and I love how you have worded it. And <laughs> I think that, I think it's because there are illogical connections that people make with other people. And I think that it's rooted in, in that like our emotions aren't logical. So like, yeah, it, it like, <laughs> I love, I like, again, I like, cause it's like, Six times seven is 42, that's weird. And it's like, I like, like, no, it isn't, but yes, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, why is the Q so early in the alphabet? It's like, what? But also like, yeah. I guess I have to live with it. What was that? I guess I have to live with it being. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, I thought your voice came from there, but it was. Gonna be, um, it should be next to you, but it's not. It's. I don't know. I feel like there's a there's a commonality. There's. It's. It's like instinctual. It's instinct. It's. It's a. Uh, uh, and I think that is what um, surreality is all is all about, right? It's not. It's not about making things just for the sake of them being weird. It's not just to like make a cookie costume because it's like weird. It's it's about like emotionally translating something that can't be articulated any other way. Yeah. And I and I and I think that like when you have one of those things, you just have to say it out loud, and then you'll see that that is actually echoed with with other people. Yeah. Thank yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, back here. Hi, I'm a, a film student at the University of Texas, and I'm like, your work inspires me every single day. I love it. Um, so I noticed, you know, you're coming from a comedy background and working as a um, stand-up comedian for some time, um, getting to see your stand-up routine in Austin a couple of months ago, and you bringing up this material, and, you know, and um, also wearing the pointy hat to your Problemista premiere, and... Um, all these different things. It feels like you're you're constantly you're reinventing and trying new material. And um, like, how much does that kind of let your your stand up kind of carry into your filmmaking and other aspects of you as an artist? I it it really like uh, I I started doing stand up because I wanted to be a a film and TV writer, and I didn't know how to enter that world. So then I was like. What if I just say it? <laughs> uh, so I started doing that, and then since then it, it's become sort of like a like a, a sketch pad for for ideas that either are meant to just be said into a microphone, or some of them end up being sketches, some of them end up being movies, and like one movie, movies plural, <laughs> literally one. But, uh, uh, and I think I'm like constantly like very like restless to like, to me they're all like vessels into which, uh, to, I, I like, and, and it's like some ideas are this, some ideas are that, and it's like, even now like doing like press for my projects, I'm like, ugh. How do I make it a, a little art project? And it's like not 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 today. I'm giving like my my look is very like a cappella today. But like, <laughs> I, like I I like I'm like I've been like I'm like well maybe maybe I wear like wigs and like fun hats, then I can make it like a little art project. Because I feel like I'm I'm restless when I feel like I'm just doing something, which is why I don't cook. <laughs> if that makes sense. Have you worn wigs to a press day or or Yeah, I started I have? started doing wigs, yeah. And now I now I get it. 
Yeah. I'm sure the journalists love it. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that's what like really like makes like a like a Lady Gaga get out of bed or it's like, oh I have to oh but I get to but wear I get that. to put on a wig. But I get to put on the wig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. will my dress be made? That did not, today? that I very, like, there is some answer in, in there. Yes, definitely. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good question. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm a really big fan of um, Los Spookies. I think it's, like, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Thank you so much. Um, I'm still mad that it didn't get renewed for season three, but, you Yes. Know. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, your character... Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> no, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Maybe in 10 years. I bought a house? <laughs> no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, um, your character in that show, Andres, I know it's, he's like not grounded in reality. He's very um, unique, I guess you could say. And I was wondering, did you take any inspiration from his character to create this character in Fantasmas, Julio? Uh, I think the, the Los Spookies character is sort of like, in sometimes it's like who I wish I was. There's a combination of many things. It's like, yeah, he's untethered, he's unbothered, he like sort of like gets to do whatever he wants. He's uh uh rich. <laughs> um uh he has a pool. Um and uh and I think that that is sort of like there's like a princeness to him that uh, I sort of like envy and I think that in the version of me that I play here, it's like someone just so frustrated that he's like doesn't quite have that. And it's like so like tethered, it's like, like Andres floats, but this version of me, I think it's like, has like a, a big rock tied to his, his, his waist and he's just so angry about it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, Julio. Uh, my name is Marlisa, and I gotta say, Fantasmas is probably my, one of my new freaking favorite shows. <laughs> um, and my question is just really wondering, since this is such an original show, like, how were you, how did you pitch it? And what language, I guess, did you use in a room to get people on your side, you know? <laughs> what, language, what language did I use in a room? Um, uh, that's, no, okay, so like something that I like, I've been thinking a lot about is my, a lot of the things that I am interested in doing, and frankly, a lot of the things that I, I, I like consume as, a, as an audience member are, quite like unpitchable um and i think that i have been very very lucky and i constantly like say that i feel like i got in through the back door and uh by and doing it by increments like i applied to write at saturday night live and then i didn't get it but then i kept doing stand-up and they kept track of me and they were like He's interesting, so then I got a job that way, and then I, you know, started doing these sketches, and then uh, Fred Armisen had pitched a show, and then he, like, brought me and my friend Anna to do it, and then, but the only reason HBO bought it, I think, is because they knew that Fred Armisen was interesting and odd and, like, would make something interesting and would bring interesting people. So then we did it, and but we didn't actually have to pitch it. And then um, uh, I made a movie that also doesn't flow as a pitch. I also had to like get in through like a very roundabout way. Uh, so I I feel like it's mostly just like through like almost like proof of concept mm -hmm. and having being lucky enough to have people like be brave enough to to say like I don't quite understand what he's saying <laughs> but something tells me it'll be okay <laughs> yeah I <th> <laughs> thank you
We have just a few minutes left, so let's try to get a couple more questions in before we wrap. We'll come over to the side. Uh, my name is Jalen. Uh, really enjoyed the show. I wasn't aware that we were getting two episodes, so that was great. Um, Sorry if we had plans. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so we saw in episode one that Julio, the character, could uh, understand how colors or letters embodied uh, different things. And so I'm curious, how did you know uh, the different cast members could embody their characters? Like we saw Alexa Demi play who she played on Euphoria. How did you know that she could become this bitch that loved yeah. breathe insurance? <laughs> Actually, it's different. It's different with every case. Like, uh, like a Steve Buscemi as like the letter Q was like obvious to me. <laughs> uh, and he read the script and he was like, "Yeah, no, I get it." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, so, so like pointy blue hair. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, and then um, with someone like Alexa, actually, I had met her and we had really like really gotten along and then I asked her if she wanted to do a part and I offered her a different part that we haven't seen here yet. And she was like, that feels a little too close to what I've done with Euphoria. But what about this woman? What's up with her? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah. And it's like, cause that's the thing. It's like people are like eager to show different parts of themselves. So then it's like for her to play this sort of like gothic like uh, customer service by way of like the favorite sort of like yeah. being, it was like very exciting. And then you just got to trust the actor. And I'm, and, and I'm glad I did. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Julio. My name Hi. is Anna. Um, I study language and film. And so Los Spookies is one of my like favorite shows because it's just awesome that we have non-English shows on streaming platforms. Um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, and so I haven't seen the full show yet, obviously. Um, but I was wondering, like, language in itself is a medium. I was wondering what your choices look like when it comes to making shows and it comes to between English and Spanish or bringing in actors who speak other languages, what that choice looks like. You know, I I think that I think that like a lot. It's a reality of a lot of people that they live multi language lives, uh, and it's certainly a reality in New York. Uh, so then I just sort of write things as I would experience them, uh, but I don't go out of my way to have someone speak a particular language. It's just sort of like to me that that's like very natural. To me, what's very unnatural is to have like a scene in Russia where everyone is speaking broken English with like heavy Russian accents. It's like, why aren't, why aren't they talking Russian? Like, uh, yeah, to me it's like, because there's actually a lot of what I do that I think is actually grounded in reality. And I think that language is actually a, a way of grounding things in reality. And I think actually part of it is also like incorporating the names of brands. I do that a lot. Like I, I name brands by name because it just feels weird not to because people do that. People curse, people say brands and it's just like, I don't know. I, language is something that I like to keep natural. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You. Oh, we have two more. All right, two more. Here we go. Hey, Julio. I'm Hi. Gilberto Giles Sosa. Um, I had one question about Basically, from what I've seen, you're one of the few creatives in the industry um, doing this type of work at this level and in English, uh, especially with Fantasmas. How do you stay sane and motivated to get all these projects to the finish line, especially since you're also writing, acting, and directing and executive producing? How do you stay sane, Julio? How do I stay and motivated? Or do you? Stay and motiv the motivated part is not difficult for me I think like I'm always into like what am I gonna do next what am I gonna do next uh, and like like always have seats of ideas and always want to keep doing them uh, and then I don't know it's really what brings me joy I don't I feel like I don't clock in and out of I'm very lucky that I don't feel like I have to like 
clock in and out of work and I'm counting the seconds for it to stop. Because to me, it's like my joy comes in creating things. And since discovering that I can just do that with people that I like, uh, it's just like, I don't know. It's where, it's where I'm happiest. To me, the hardest thing I have ever done is going to school. <laughs> like waking up every day and like do math. Yeah. All right, last question. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ezra, a uh, big fan of all of your work. Um, I noticed in um, Problemista, you had this um, kind of also one-off character, um, the, the, the customer service lady who like sucks and she has like the knife instead of the sword and she like totally ruins all your stuff, man. I was just wondering like, you also had Alexa Demi do this and then what happened to you? Like, yeah, I know. I, I, know. I, I was just curious like, and also they're, they're both, I think like in this, there was like that thing about Bank of America and she was the Bank of America representation. Like, I, I don't know, I was just like. Well, Bank of America, I have beef. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Bank, of, so, Bank yeah. of America did leave me at negative 400. Uh, um, so with them, yeah, it's an enemy I'll take to the grave. But uh, <laughs> the, yeah, I think that like, I think that I, I'm, I'm endlessly interested in the tragedy that is customer service. And by that, I mean... By that, I mean that it, you have, like, someone desperately trying to get something, and then you have someone withholding that from someone. But the, the employee is, is cl just clocking in and clocking out. The employee has... You don't know their life. You don't... Uh, they are they're like they're they're stripped of their humanity by not being allowed to just like talk to you per person to person uh and and it it just becomes a sort of like they're just like reading out the manual and, and it's and it's and it's tragic for both i think it's sad on both ends and i uh i actually like after seeing Prolemista, a friend of mine um who now makes costumes and made a, few, made a few costumes for this, told me he was like, I used to work at Bank of America. <laughs> and when I had to like be that bitch and be like, and just like break someone, I would feel so bad that after my shift, I would find that person on Facebook and DM them apologizing. Cool. Isn't that beautiful and heartbreaking? <laughs> And yeah, to me, it's just like one of the great tragedies of our of our time is just like people being like, sorry, can't do it. And then that person being vilified. And it's like the Alexa Demi character is like, to me, the joke in it is like, what if the person actually gave a shit about the place that she worked? <laughs> and, and how still ridiculous still couldn't would make it, it out on top. Yeah, yeah. Because the place that she works at doesn't give a shit about her. Yeah. Julio, thank you so much for being thank you. here with us tonight. When does the show premiere? June 7th. June 7th? June 7th. Hashtag Quintasmus at HBO, at Stream on Max, at ATX, at ATX. Tell your friends and know that yeah. you're in store for a great season because it only gets better from here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, thank Julio. You so much. Thank you. Thank you.